Good day to everyone. I would firstly like to thank uh, Simona and everyone at the Met Nostan Galeria and Maribor for inviting us to participate in this project. Uh, I will very shortly uh, present what you can mostly see or a part of uh, the research that we made, which you can see uh, downstairs uh, as part of this exhibition. So this is a condensed version of an of a already condensed version of our research. <laughs> Um, beginning in 2011, uh, along with my colleague Lana Lovrencic, who is sitting here in the, at the audience, in the audience uh, we began uh, a research on the destruction of monuments dedicated to the people's liberation struggle in Croatia for the Serbian National Council in Zagreb. And uh, throughout this, and uh, in 2012, we had uh, an exhibition which uh, showed the results of our research, and this was a leaflet for the exhibition. So. This, is a, this was a picture actually taken by Igor Grubic, the artist who was also present at, uh, who's also presenting at this exhibition, but who left. It's a, uh, a monument at the village Košute near Split, which was made uh, by uh, sculptor Vuko Bombardelli, and this is the state of the monument today. It was bombed, uh, it was uh, mined uh, in the early 90s by the, local, by the locals, actually. And these are some of the pictures from uh, our exhibition in 2012, just to show them very, very shortly. Uh, what we tried to accomplish with our exhibition, we only took about 90 examples of uh, destroyed monuments in Croatia, or more than 3,000 of them were destroyed in some ways. We wanted to show the ways in which this destru destruction took place, so the structural and organization, the structure and the organization necessary for such a massive destruction. But we also, so one part was dedicated to destruction itself, and we also had two other parts. One was called uh, Transformations in Concepts, another was called Representation, where, where we dealt with uh, memorial sites or big memorial places, and also with uh, uh, memorials to concentration camps or concentration camps, which also underwent uh, great changes, conceptual changes after the breakup of Yugoslavia, especially the memorial place at uh, Yasenov, the, the Yasenovac Memorial Museum which was the biggest concentration camp in Croatia, which completely, uh, after being restored uh, in uh, 2000, I think, completely changed its entire uh, concept based uh, upon the Holocaust Museum in Washington. Uh, but today I will only very shortly speak about the different types of destruction and maybe try to explain some of the mechanisms behind this destru destruction. So this is a, a picture from uh, the city cemetery in Sisak. It is um, actually, so the picture says, uh, uh, caution, the monument is uh, falling apart. And uh, I didn't, I, I purposely didn't take, uh, didn't put uh, pictures of monuments uh, in their primary state. Uh, this was, uh, this is surrounding the, the grandiose central monument uh, made by Anton Augustinčić. Uh, so, it's literally falling apart. Uh, anyway, so somewhere between five and eight thousand monuments to the people's liberation struggle and, the, and to the partisan movement have been erected only in Croatia between 1945 and 1990. Uh, in 2000, the Association of Anti-Fascist Fighters and Anti-Fascists of Croatia published a monograph which presented 2009. 164 of these monuments destroyed or devastated between 1990 and 2000. Um, the destruction of these monuments is commonly understood, understood as a result of war activities, but as our research has shown, it, all, it had already begun early in 1990, which is almost a year, which is a year before the declaration of war and before the start of war activities. And also many of these monuments were destroyed outside of war zones and a lot of them were destroyed after 2000, so a long time after the war had stopped. Um, also, a great deal of monuments were removed by local authorities or, or uh, destroyed following the war, and a lot of them were on, left, have been neglected and been left to decay. So we tried to, uh, we tried to kind of work out a typology of uh, devastation, and we have, uh, in our research, shown four ways, four most common ways of devastation. First of them is actually the monuments that were destroyed in war activities or in military actions. Uh, this picture is showing 
the Croatian National Army, members of the Croatian National Army in 1992, uh, before the remains of the, um, of the monument to the victory of people of Slavonia and Kamenska. The monument was built in 1968. It is the work of probably the most prominent Yugoslav sculptor, uh, Vojn Bakic. It was blasted in 1992 as part of the military action of liberation of the Požega Basin by orders of Minikov Savinas, who, who was a commandant of the uh, 123rd Brigade of Croatian Army. Uh, the mining was conducted by experts because uh, it was mined nine times because the sculpture had 25 to 30 stra static strongholds and it was 30 meters high. Uh, within, I think, a week or so, the entire material of, this, of the sculpture was taken away and now nothing remains in the place of the, of the monument. Uh, next is uh, also an example of, of something that is destroyed in war activities <coughs> is a monument in uh, to the victims of fascist terror in Slobozhtina. It, uh, it was actually a sculpture of a mother holding a child, uh, which was uh, done by Nikola Kechen, in another renowned uh, sculptor. It was destroyed in the early 90s, uh, while uh, a military, uh, during a military action, which was conducted also by the Croatian National Army, where the entire village was raised. It was a, a village that was mostly populated by ethnic Serbs. Um, the, mo the memorial was erected in 1951 to commemorate the death of 1,368 victims of the Ustasha regime, which was a local Croatian fascist regime. Uh, the bodies of the victims were thrown into wells that surround the monument. And the only, what is only remaining today is this pedestal, which is sometimes used uh, to hold the pumpkin festival organized by Eko Mavrovic Farming Company. Uh, Mavrovic is, uh, was a renowned Croatian boxer who now turned uh, an entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, now I'm moving on to the second type of destruction. These are monuments that were devastated or destroyed outside of military actions. Here we have the remnants of uh, the monument to the renowned uh, uh, people's, people's hero, Stepan Filipovic. You have probably seen his picture, the picture of him. Uh, so he was hung by the, Ch by the Germans and the Chetniks in, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 1942. And there is a, a very, there is a similar sculpture made by Vojn Bakic in Valjevo. Uh, this one was made by, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> yes, Stefan Glashenin. Uh, it was erected in 1978, uh, and uh, it was mined during the night of the 17th and 8th in July 1991. So this is actually in southern Dalmatia, and it was outside of a war zone. Uh, there was a grandiose pedestal on which the figure was standing with his hands held up in, air, in, in the air and now the only thing that is left of the pedestal is this piece here. Um, there is actually a very interesting story about it because uh, the entire area surrounding the, ped the, surrounding the monument is now, uh, was cleaned by the local government in 2010 by the municipality. Uh, because uh, they decided to open a business zone, business zone in its location. And only two years later, the business zone uh, went bankrupt. So now there is no business zone and no monument. Um, another monument that was uh, not destroyed as part of a military action is uh, the central monument in Karlovac. Uh, this was a work by Vanya Radoš erected in, 19, in 1955, it was mined in 1991. Uh, after the mining, the remains of the damaged sculptures were taken away. Uh, we have recently uh, discovered that they, they are located in the village cells outside of Karlova, Karlovac. And for years, this wall was neglected and covered in graffiti. Um, in the last couple of years, due to the city's interests in building a tourist, more tourist appeal, the wall and its, around, and its surroundings have been cleaned, but the bronze sculptures are not returned. Uh, the front group was destroyed beyond repair during the mining due to the lack of Arkham materials and the destruction of casts. There, there will be actually no way for its reconstruction, probably. 
There are suggestions that the wall should be removed to the city cemetery, allowing the reconstruction of the part of the Renaissance city wall demolished as uh, uh, demolished during the erection of, of the monument in uh, 55. So the third, the third group are monuments altered or transformed or removed by local authorities, and this is really very interesting because here we can see how ideology works and how aesthetic models uh, follow uh, uh, the, the shifts in economic and polit political and economic structures. Uh, this is uh, so. This is the place where uh, a monument to a monument partisans during the first day of days of uprising in Gospić used to stand. Now it's a monument dedicated to the what Croatians like to call, call homeland war. Uh, it was this uh, monument. So the, the monument was completely destroyed during the war. We don't have an exact time. It's very very hard to to get, gather this information. Uh, so this monument was work, a work by Pao Peric and it was erected in 58 in memory of the resistance of the people of Lika and the victims of fascism. Uh, the remains were removed and the site was cleaned by the local government. And in 2000, a new monument was, this is the new monument which was erected in 2000, dedicated to the soldiers and civilians killed in the 90s. Uh, the monument was erected with joint efforts or financial support by the Ministry of the Homeland War Veterans and the municipality of the county. Uh, also here we can, again, <coughs> we can uh, again uh, uh, mention the monument in Oposen, which, which we saw before, because this monument was also removed by, uh, the, the remnants of the monument were also removed by a strict decision of the local municipality. Uh, and now we come to the last, last category, which are derelict or neglected monuments. And of course, the most notorious example of this is Petro Bagora, a grandiose work by Vojn Bakic. Um, just shortly. So the monument, to the, up, uh, the monument to the uprising of the people of Kordun and Banja at Petro Bagora is nowadays faced with the possibility of disappearing. These are the pictures from 2009. Uh, we also have some pictures from 2012 and almost all of the plaque now is missing. Uh, so it was, the monument was open to public unfinished, it's actually an entire complex and the building uh, which was open and finished in 19, 1981. We found a very interesting piece of information that Yugoslavia actually took a huge loan from the uh, World Bank and the International Monetary Fund to build this monument. So this is one of the debts that we are still paying, <laughs> the succeeding countries. During the war, during the, the war of the 90s, uh, it was used as a military base by the Yugoslav, national, the Yugoslav army, uh, which resulted in it's actually surviving the war mostly undamaged. And the most of the damage, uh, the systemic destruction started after the war. The years of the neglect of this huge complex had made it a target to thieves. Uh, uh, we have to be aware that, that this area was uh, severely impoverished and depopulated after, uh, after the war of the 90s. Most of the industry was destroyed. So people who stayed there literally have nothing to live off. So they take the plaques in the night and they sell them. And of course the police and the Ministry of the Culture cannot react. Because there, there are some video cameras there, and, but, but it's almost impossible to find the perpetrator. I mean, nobody is bothered to find the perpetrators of this. Um, since 2009, uh, as I have said, the, most of the stainless steel plates were removed. On top of the building, also some radio transmitters were illegally placed by the Croatian National Radio Television. And uh, it has become a, a symbol of the extent of the destruction of the People's Liberation Monuments and the lack of the will for their adequate protection and restoration. So in order to understand uh, how, why, and by whom these monuments were destroyed, one needs to examine the process of the violent destruction of Yugoslav social legacy, workers' rights, labor organizations, the public health and public education systems, public space and civil institutions, industry and the economy. The process of transformation and privatization of social property uh, was overshadowed by an ideological struggle against the backward totalitarian Serbo-communist project of socialist Yugoslavia. These were the, the, the syntagms used in Croatia. Leaders of this nationalistically charged battle mostly focused on culture and arts. A, reg a new regime turned towards historicism and the creation of national mythology. And uh, this regime fetishized 
purity, the purity of nation, the purity of language, the purity of culture, and it made a break with social relations constructed in socialism by deletion of citizens, so which we, you had in Slovenia, which we also had in Croatia in form of ethnic cleansing, by the deepening of class antagonisms, by the creation of an entrepreneurial and clerical elite, by traditionalizing social relations, etc. And also, as well, and it also destroyed the symbolic representatives of these relations, which these monuments were. So it is no wonder that the People's Liberation Monuments were among the first targets of this iconoclasm. Thank you very much.